Canon RF has been my main camera system for the last few years now and thanks to that I have had the opportunity to try, own and review a whole bunch of Canon RF cameras and lenses. Now we all know that RF mount is not cheap but after having owned the most expensive right down to the cheapest RF cameras and lenses I know that you do not need the most expensive L series lenses for example to get amazing results. So this video is hopefully a guide for anybody that's getting into the Canon RF mount on a budget. We'll mainly talk about a portrait setup on a budget but we'll also take a look at travel and video setups as well as taking a look at some of my favourite tried and tested budget accessories for both photo and video. So let's kick things off with portraits. So let's start with camera. Now this suggestion comes after I have comprehensively compared most of Canon's RF full frame cameras, including the original R, the R5, the R6 Mark I and II, and the R8. And this camera, when it comes to photo, image quality and color at least, beats out most of them. And that is the original Canon EOS R. Side by side in terms of resolution, the EOS R is only really bested by the Canon R5. And even then, especially in terms of portraits for example, the differences are so small in the real world. I put this to the test myself in an earlier video of mine where I compared the EOS R to the R5 and the R6. And in general, I found that the differences between the three is so small that you should always, for photo, go for the cheaper option. But if you want to check out the full video on that, there is a link in the description where you can also download some RAW files to see for yourself. Pros for the EOS R are great build, excellent ergonomics, and those amazing Canon colors that I think are only really beaten by the Canon R6 Mark II. In general, I found the EOS R to have amazing image quality in photo, and it really is diminishing returns after you step up beyond the sensor in that EOS R. Yes, there may be some extreme circumstances where other cameras pull ahead, such as in extreme low light, but I even tested that and found that the R kept up really well with the R5 and the R6, to the point where I wouldn't let that be something that sways me one way or another. There are some cons to the camera though, and one of those is that it is missing a joystick, and it also has a D-pad instead of that command wheel on the back of the camera. Bigger downsides are that the EOS R only has a single card slot, and it also has relatively poor video specs, at least when put up against most budget mirrorless cameras released recently. If you absolutely need dual card slots, so if you are a working professional that really relies on that redundancy, then the cheapest full frame body you can get right now in the Canon R system is the original R6. Prices on a used R6 are great right now thanks to the recent release of the Mark II. And the original R6 has amazing image quality in both photo and video. And I think it is the sensible buy over the Mark II, especially if you mainly shoot photo. Now onto lenses, where for a portrait setup on a budget, I would recommend a two prime lens setup. And my recommendation for those two lenses is the Canon RF 35mm 1.8 and the Canon RF 85mm f2 prime lenses. The RF 35mm 1.8 has you covered for your environmental portraiture and your wider shots in general. And this is easily one of my favourite RF mount lenses full stop, no matter what the budget. And you can pick these up relatively cheap now if you go for a used one anyway like I did. I found this lens to be super sharp wide open and it has a maximum aperture of 1.8 which is great for giving your portraits that background separation despite this being a relatively wide angle lens and once you step this lens down to 2.8 well then at that point this lens in terms of sharpness and resolution absolutely keeps up with any other RF mount lens L series or otherwise it also has really useful macro functionality as well as built-in lens stabilization just to make this even more of a versatile prime lens now for your short telephoto prime lens and the Canon RF 85mm f2 is a lens that I have been introduced to recently and it has left me incredibly impressed. I found that this lens is pretty much as sharp wide open as what is arguably the best portrait lens that Canon has ever made the Canon RF 85mm 1.2. It has excellent build while still being relatively lightweight and it's also a really versatile option again thanks to having that useful macro functionality and built-in lens image stabilization. An 85mm lens like this is great for those classic headshots whether that's outside or in the studio but I also love this 85mm lens for full length shots too if you're looking for maximum 
background separation, then this lens has it in abundance. I made a video comparing this lens to its much bigger brother, the RF 85mm 1.2. You can check it out down below, but I honestly would recommend this f2 lens to 99% of people over the wildly expensive Canon RF 85mm 1.2. In my opinion, at 85mm f2 is more than enough background blur or background separation for anybody. The video I just mentioned also includes some RAW files if you want to download those and take a look at the performance of this lens for yourself. Now if your budget cannot stretch to a 2 lens setup for portraits then I have the best all around solution for you and that is the Canon RF 50mm 1.8 prime lens. This nifty 50 can be picked up for around about £100 on the used market which is what I did and I found mine actually on Amazon marketplace and it was practically brand new. 50mm is probably my favourite focal length when it comes to portraits thanks to its versatility. With just a few steps forward or backwards you can get your full length shot your mid-length shots and even your head shots. This lens is tiny and extremely lightweight whilst still having a wide maximum aperture of f1.8 and at 50mm 1.8 gives you more than enough background separation for your portraits. In my opinion this lens is more than sharp enough wide open at 1.8 but if you are willing to step it down a little bit to 2.8 then at that point the results are astonishing and I've put it up against the RF 50mm 1.2 and when they're both at 2.8 the results are almost identical. Again I compared those two lenses extensively and was really impressed with the 1.8 up against the 1.2 but if you want to check that out there is a link in the description to that full video too but in my opinion if you are just looking for one do-it-all lens you cannot go wrong with this 50mm 1.8. Now on to travel where for me I want a small and lightweight setup that has me covered in both photo and video. Which brings me on to the camera which in my opinion this is the perfect travel camera and that is the Canon EOS R8. This is Canon's smallest full frame camera on the RF system and it has easily been one of my favourites to use recently. Both photo and video image quality is top class as it shares the exact same sensor as the incredible Canon R6 Mark II which I have tested extensively even against the R8 itself and this is one of the best cameras on the market right now for photo and video quality. But whilst giving you the same image quality of the R6 Mark II, you get it in a much smaller and lightweight body. And that small and lightweight build makes for an incredible and inconspicuous little travel camera that also has great hybrid functionality where swapping between photo and video is effortless and quick. Onto lenses, in danger of sounding like a broken record, again I just have to recommend the RF 35mm 1.8 for travel. I'll be singing this lens's praises a lot because it is just so versatile and high quality for both photo and video. This lens and this focal length in general has absolutely been my go-to when it comes to travel in terms of prime lenses at least. And of course it is small and lightweight and thanks to that it has been without a doubt one of my favourite lenses to use on that little Canon R8. But if you can stretch that budget a little bit and you want to pick up a one and done lens for travel then I would highly recommend taking a look at the RF 24 to 105 f4. This lens is just amazing for everything. It is so versatile for both photo and video and although it's probably going to be the most expensive lens I recommend to you today if you keep an eye on the used market, you can find people selling these off that got the lens as part of a kit lens deal. Now onto my recommendation for a budget video setup where you do have to look at some of the more expensive camera options in order to get things like 10-bit video and C-Log3, which I think are a minimum for anybody that takes video seriously. And again, my budget recommendation for a camera body for video is the Canon R8. The Canon R8 has really blown me away with its video image quality, and I used it exclusively on a project recently shooting anamorphic lenses and found it to perform flawlessly. The R8 has excellent 25p quality, but I have found that it also has, without a doubt, some of the best 50p image quality on the market. Thanks to C-Log3, it has great dynamic range and colors, and I've personally found C-Log3 to be one of the easiest log profiles to grade across any camera system. The R8 has some downsides, one of which being it has just a single card slot and it does not have IBIS. It is also prone to overheating, particularly in 50p, 
although I have personally not run into any overheating in any real world usage with this camera yet anyway. For lenses, due to a lack of IBIS in the R8, again, I would point you in the direction of one of the smaller wide angle prime lenses from Canon that also has built in lens IS. Both the RF 35mm 1.8 and the 24mm 1.8 thanks to their built-in lens stabilization will give you stable footage, whilst also both being very versatile and useful focal lengths for video, which will have you covered in most circumstances. In terms of which one you pick, I found them both to have great image quality, so just go with the focal length that you prefer. And again, if you can push the budget, then a versatile zoom lens like the 24 to 105 f4 is a perfect single lens setup for video. Now onto some of my favorite lower cost accessories for both photo and video. And my first recommendation is this small rig tripod. My main tripod is the Peak Design Travel Tripod, which is very expensive, but Lately, I found myself using this small, lightweight and low cost tripod from Small Rig way more. I found that the tripod plates with the Peak Design tripod are really annoying to take on and off due to having to use an Allen key to remove them. The Small Rig's tripod mount is much quicker and easier to use thanks to having this twist lock screw. And this little detail alone makes me grab it a lot more than I do the Peak Design tripod these days. On Amazon right now, you can pick this tripod up for under 60 pound. And for that, you get a compact, well-built tripod that extends to 72 inches, built of high quality aluminium and has levers on the legs, which I much prefer to other tripods twist lock systems. Just holding this tripod in the hands, you can tell that despite its low cost, it is really well-built and it is a tripod that you can rely on. It also has accurate adjustments and markers for both pan and tilt, which is something even much more expensive tripods don't have. I've used it with both light and heavy setups and always found it to be stable and reliable. Despite its low cost, there really is very little downside when it comes to this small rig tripod. What's more, this tripod can even turn into a monopod, making it a really versatile two-in-one option, whether it's for photo, whether it's for travel or landscape photography, or even video. It also comes with this handy carry case, it has spike feet and even a phone holder. If you're interested in picking this up, there's a link to buy the tripod in the description along with a discount code, so a big thanks to Small Rig for that. Another important accessory that you can easily spend hundreds on unnecessarily is a camera backpack. And my recommendation without a doubt for a small low cost camera backpack is this Vesta Aspire 41 backpack from Vanguard, which right now is on sale on Amazon for around about 50 pounds. The Vesta Aspire 41 is a small and lightweight camera backpack that can hold a surprising amount of gear. I relied on it as my only backpack for a trip recently. And despite its small size, I managed to pack it full of camera gear and even when it was full it was still comfortable to wear on long walks. It has your traditional rear access to the main camera compartment which I have managed to get two full frame camera and lenses into comfortably but it also has this top access area which I have used for things like filters and accessories but recently I've actually been throwing my Fujifilm X100V into here for quick access to. It has dual tripod or water bottle holders as well as having plenty of compartments for accessories. I really don't think you could ask for much more from such a small and low cost camera backpack and I highly without a doubt recommend this to anybody that is looking for a great first camera backpack from a trusted brand like Vanguard. You can get this backpack in both grey like I have here but also in blue. There's a link in the description if you want to check out this backpack on the Vanguard website. Big thanks to Vanguard for originally sending this backpack out to me to try. Another super important accessory is of course media. And in terms of SD cards, I highly recommend these integral SD cards, which I always seem to find them to be quite a bit cheaper than the competition. The exact ones I use are the Integral Ultima Pro X cards. And again, they are cheaper than the competition and I've used them in my most demanding video cameras including the R5 and the Canon C70, and I have found them to perform flawlessly. 
just as good as my much more expensive Angel Bird or Pro Grade card. So these come highly recommended too. Now my last recommendation for accessories is filters. ND filters are an absolute necessity when it comes to video. And although I personally prefer to use a variable ND, a good quality one is not cheap. And that's why on a budget, I would recommend solid ND filters. For low cost ones, I've been really happy with these earth filters. I have a free stop earth ND filter here that I use on my RF 35mm 1.8. I think budget solid ND filters tend to perform much better in terms of things like sharpness and color than your cheaper variable ND filters, which can introduce all kinds of issues into your footage. So I would always recommend you stay away from cheap variable NDs and instead look at solid NDs like these earth ones. I think I picked this one up for around about £40. But if you're against solid ND filters like these and you insist on having a variable ND, then the cheapest one that I have personally been happy with is the Freewell variable ND filters. And I found that they perform pretty good in terms of sharpness and colour, not as good as the Nisi True Colour, but you will save quite a bit by going in that direction. But that is the cheapest good variable ND filter I would recommend. So that's it. That's my video and my recommendations when it comes to budget setups on the RF system for portraits, travel and video. Now I have deliberately left out any EF lenses or the whole idea of adapting EF lenses to RF cameras. And I've done that because I am planning on making a video soon where I compare as many EF lenses as I can to their RF mount counterparts. So if there are any EF lenses that you want me to include in that video, then please let me know down in the comments. But thank you as always for watching and please let me know in the comments down below what your favorite budget RF mount lenses and cameras are. I'd be really interested to know. Until then, I will catch you guys in the next video. Thank you.